I'm honored to be reading tonight at Antioch, my alma mater, Topaz Cohort. Hey. I'll be graduating under a false name. I'm also honored to be Lambda's Emerging Voices Token Trans Woman Fellow for 2015. <laughs> Following in the footsteps of Morgan Page, Token Trans Woman 2014, and Bryn Kelly, Token Trans Woman 2013. <laughs> So, this is a new story written during this writer's retreat. It's a completely fictional story. It's called Vampire Queer Writer's Retreat. <laughs> <laughs> to enter a space, a vampire must be invited. So the first and most difficult task that any vampire faces when attempting to integrate herself among the living is to get herself invited into their domain. This is hard. You must sometimes work harder than the living might in order to do it. So you are honored to be invited to a desert retreat for writers. You, uh, writers among the monsters, villains, and malcontents. You imagine how nice this will be, how distinct from your normal life, hiding among the living who do not suspect your curse. To speak at last with other vampires about your shared project of articulating your vampiric experiences through writing. Yeah. Except you are the only vampire here. Yeah. I am the only vampire here. You write to your book to repel Nico in Sconston or Granite Tower within the Northern Prairies. I feel as if I am succumbing to a despair about the monstrous community and my place in it that I had previously avoided by preemptively cutting myself off from that community and other human souls generally. And now I have to go through that despair and it sucks. Everything sucks except this fire pit that I'm warming my feet besides in the freezing desert night while I write this letter. No matter everything sucks to you, this fire pit is pretty rad. Vampires, all about fires. You know that Nico will get this. You mail the letter. You wait for her to respond. In the meantime, you attempt to get over your disappointment. You attempt to relate. When necessary, you explain your vampireness. You start to wonder about whether you are talking too much about this. Sometimes other living monsters begin to talk about early experiences. This sparks thoughts in your mind. You start to explain your own history, make connections, tell stories. Sometimes this works when people can find connections. Sometimes this doesn't work. Faces become blank. The ways of the dead are strange to the living. The question arises. A smart one, you think, and relevant to your work, about whether death narratives are played out in vampiric literature. <laughs> How did you die? Are you, are you, you know, taking pills in order to die? Are you getting staked anytime soon? <laughs> Most people have the sense not to talk about death narratives anymore. Good on you. Pat yourselves on the back. Many questions, however, remain. Where do vampires buy their clothes? What is the meaning of a vampire's name? What pronouns might a vampire use? Speak louder. Are vampires deceptive? What is the nature of a vampire's desire? Are vampires permitted to have desires? Is there a desire to, say, drink the blood of human women? Do you ask yourselves that question? Do vampires ask themselves that question? Do vampires ask other vampires that question? And what if there are no other vampires to ask? And when will Nico write back to you and let you know what she thinks? You can't know this because Nico is not here. Physical proximity, so irreplaceable. It takes time for information to travel by stream of bats. <laughs> At one point, another vampire is brought in to explain how to write about vampires to the other monsters. This is necessary because there aren't many vampires at the retreat itself. A lot of people will come up to you to ask you your opinion on this presentation by this vampire. They're all very excited about it, so there's not much space for you to say that you liked it and had issues with it, too. You will be a downer. Everybody wants so much to include you. It is nice to meet people halfway. And you didn't not like it. You longed for it, frankly. Marking it on your schedule, trying to convince tired and busy people to go. The memory of meeting this vampire and passing it something you don't know, an awards ceremony, an event. She doesn't remember you, and she is famous, and everybody crowds around to talk to her about her work, vampirism, etc. It is helpful, it is interesting, and then she is gone, and you realize in the moment of her leaving, you not having spoken to her again, despite being extremely aware at every moment of the party in the courtyard, smoking cigarettes, drinking maybe too much blood with other monsters, <laughs> of her physical location. Yet you don't want to intrude, and then she is gone. She is sealed beneath the lid of her coffin. And you return to your room, and you realize just how much everything you thought would be okay, as long as you had a non-zero expectation of encountering another vampire to talk to within the near future, and now only monsters who are like you and that not like you remain. You talk with the leaders of the space about this issue. <laughs> much work has already been done to make the space safer for vampires than in previous years. The fields of garlic surrounding every dormitory have been plowed up, for example. <laughs> The gigantic crucifix hoisted down from the wall above the dining nook. Others complain too. It is sunny because it's the desert, but this is hard to help. Yet vampire inclusion is a hard problem. 
If only more vampires would apply, except you know that they do. If only more vampires would become appropriately credentialed as potential workshop leaders, except you know that they are. You discuss strategy regarding this problem with a noted undead ally, Count Rigel, the Lich Lord. He has good notions. There are a number of liches, wraiths, ghosts, revenants, and other undead spectrum identities present at this retreat. How best to explain the relationship between vampires and liches, etc.? You guess that a good metaphor might be the way that trans women in space after space are systematically and dramatically underrepresented relative to trans men and masculine gender queers, but this is a subject of more general interest to human people and you don't want to get sidetracked with this metaphor. You want what other people want. You want to write. You want to talk to people. You want to connect to your history. You want to learn to communicate it. You don't want to complain. Vampires always complain. You call people out. You make it unsafe to speak. You are always intruding into spaces. You are creeping up walls with your loud, thin fingers. You are catty. You are loud. You are taking up space. You are taking up time. You have living privilege. You tell yourself that. You are being unfair. You tell yourself that. You are being unfair. No one can help the world. And everyone, all of them, are nice to you. Everyone is struggling. Everyone is alone in the end. For now, you have to go on. You must learn to trust them better. You will be kinder to yourself, integrating better into the broader monstrous community. You will stand up for yourself more, and you will know when the work of standing up for yourself within a living monstrous space is going to become too difficult. Toughen up, relax, have a good time. Lose yourself in your work and conversation with people who you tell yourself you get, that you love, despite their not being vampires. Must they be? We're all monsters. Our similarities are more important than our differences. You are feeling better. You will be okay. And then Nico writes back to you. God, that sucks. I'm so, so sorry, and I'm so in love, and I want to tell you everything about it. Talk soon. And for the first time in a week, your heart swells with whatever cursed thing that you and she share instead of blood. How does one kill a vampire? It is impossible to do it in the mundane world. She will only turn into mist and disappear. She will run from you, smiling and disconnected as she melts into the shadows. But it's different beyond the mundane world, because here she does not want to be invisible. And you can only kill a vampire when she is willing to expose her heart. Thank you all very much. Yeah.